everyone, and welcome to Gruff Talk, where each week we take a deep dive into all the ways we can feel better, look better, live better, and age better. I started Gruff Talk because I have a lot of questions about how to age successfully, and you do too. What do you want to know? Who do you want to hear from on this show? Send your questions and topic ideas to us at Gruff Talk Podcast at gmail.com. And don't forget to subscribe to Gruff Talk wherever you listen to podcasts so you never miss an episode. While reading something last week in one of the trillions of medical newsletters I get, I came across a statistic that stopped me in my tracks and I really wanted to share it. Here it is. According to research, just being positive about aging, as like I am, could add 7.5 years to your life. Yep. 7.5 years. Okay, is your mind blown too? Yeah, I thought it would be. Today I'm talking with someone who is not only world famous for getting people of all sizes, shapes, abilities, and ages off the couch and on the path to running, but he also has a very positive message. A message that, as it turns out, can impact not only how well you age, but maybe how long you will age. I'm your host, Barbara Hannah Grufferman. You know how when people talk about a coming-of-age story, it's always about a young person who evolves into adulthood after some life-changing experience like love or whatever? Well, I have my own coming-of-age story, except that this story takes place when I turned 50. When I hit 50, I felt pretty yucky about the whole thing. Having just gone through menopause, I was gaining weight, not exercising, definitely not eating right, or getting enough sleep for sure. Worse, those media messages that were everywhere telling me that my life was over was starting to sink in. I was ready to put that proverbial blanket over my head and stay there. But then, just as I was at what I thought was my lowest point, a perfect storm was brewing. First, while watching the New York City Marathon go by, it goes right by up the street where we live in New York City. My youngest daughter said she wanted to hold up a sign that said, go mom, go, which caused me and everyone else around me to burst out laughing until I looked at her face and I realized "Mm -mm, she's not joking. Seeing her serious face, I stopped laughing and these words came tumbling out of my mouth. I don't know how and I don't know when, but yes, I will do it. Then the very next day, there was an article in the Wall Street Journal about a man who had created a program to get people moving more. It was so simple and so motivating that I ran out and got my first pair of running shoes, picked up a copy of his book. He has written many books. It's called Marathon, You Can Do It, and put myself on the path to a whole new life. While my guest today, Jeff Galloway, the one and only, is a true pro when it comes to running. And of course, we're going to be talking about how you can get started on the running program, whatever age you are. He also inspires people all over the world with this one simple message. You can do it no matter what your age. Before Jeff Galloway became a world-class coach with training programs all over the world, he was a world-class distance runner himself. Jeff represented the U.S. in the Munich, yeah, the Munich Olympics, the World Cross Country Championships, and many international events. Millions of runners and walkers have used the Galloway Method in training programs through his training groups, weekend retreats, online coaching, and yep, his 33 books and counting. His goal is to help people improve mental and physical vitality past 100 years. That is his goal. His innovative and successful training programs have reduced aches and pains and injuries for so many people. And he really wants to talk to beginners. That Those are the people who are really near and dear to his heart, like me 15 years ago. Galloway's concept based upon research is move your feet and expand your brain. I shudder when I think back to what my life and body would be now 15 years later if I had believed that, mm nope, I'm too old, I can't start running, I can't run a marathon, are you crazy? And all the other I can'ts that were swirling around in my head at that time. 
I look back at that pivotal moment in my life, the perfect storm of my daughter saying she wanted to hold that sign, and the article about Jeff Galloway in the Wall Street Journal. And I know that my life was changed forever. Sure, I give my daughter the credit (laughs) for putting the idea into my head that day, but I give Jeff Galloway all the credit for helping me get to that finish line again and again. So everyone, sit back, relax, or better yet, put on a pair of running shoes and take a walk or go for a run while listening to this chat and prepare to be inspired. Hello, Jeff, and welcome to Gruff Talk. Great to be here, Barbara. Okay, listen, I just want to say up front and out loud that I know you have a lot of fans out there, but I am your number one fan, period, end of story. As you know, I credit you and your program for changing my life. And in fact, I devote the entire introduction of my last book to you. So I think that's proof enough that I'm your number one fan. What do you say? <laughs> uh, that's super. And uh, I appreciate every connection that we have because I learn some things whenever I'm on the air with you or listen to you present. Oh, thank you so much. And you know, because of you, I also did the Dopey Challenge in Florida. Everyone, if you don't know what the Dopey Challenge is, and Jeff is really, really connected to that. It's at Disney World each year, not the last couple of years, but it's going on again now, post-pandemic. But it's a four-day event, and you run 5K one day, 10K the next day, half marathon the next day, and the full marathon. And I did it with my daughter, and uh, thanks to Jeff and his program. (laughs) Well, okay. You know, this is part of the theme of your show. People can do these things at any age if they have the right strategy. Yeah, it is all about strategy. And it's also having that positive attitude, which we will get to. So Jeff, before we take the deep dive into how you're going to motivate all of our listeners today to jump up and start running, let's do a little warm up first. Please tell the Gruff Talk audience a bit about what the Run, Walk, Run program is and why you created it. Well, I created this method by uh, having to uh, do something that I'd never done before, and that is teach a beginner running course in 1974. I had worked with athletes, even beginning athletes, but never total beginners. And this class of 22 was definitely totally uh, a beginner class. None of them had been doing any running whatsoever for at least five years. So I had to think quickly. And what I decided to do from the very first workout was to listen for huffing and puffing and Mm -hmm. then have people walk. So we divided into three groups. I met with each group separately throughout the week. And uh, over a 10 week period, every one of those 22 finished the class with great success, finishing either a 5K or a 10K, and there were no injuries. And I just uh, realized I'd never been with a group of runners over even in eight weeks in which there were no injuries. So I started using Run, Walk, Run in the running classes that I was conducting through my Fidibities store. And uh, it was really miraculous as I collected the data. Not only did folks reduce or eliminate their injuries, but they actually ran faster with Run, Walk, Run. But what it enabled me to do is reach out to bare beginners who had never tried to run ever before. And finding the right Run, Walk, Run for each one of them allowed them to do things that they never thought were possible. Mm -hmm. You know, I recently came across a statistic in a medical journal, because I I get trillions of them every week, and uh, which was a bit mind-blowing to me. And it really goes back to what you were just saying. And here it is. Just by being positive about aging, you could add 
over seven years to your life. Think about that. The article went on to say that if people start to believe that they can't or shouldn't do certain things just because they are a certain age, this will limit their world and could not only stop them from enjoying life, but could actually contribute to premature death. This was really astounding to me, Jeff. And you must encounter people every day who say to you, I can't start running. Are you kidding me? I'm too old. What do you say to these people? Well, first of all, uh, I tell them that they are limiting themselves. Uh, Anytime you say categorically, I can't do something, you're setting up a wall in your brain that uh, doesn't allow you to exert or go into areas that could enrich your life. And running does enrich your life. It not only helps you physically in so many ways. And by the way, what's interesting about your statistic on the extension of life. Adding years to your life, yeah, just by being positive about aging. Well, there's very good research showing how various types of activities extend your lifespan also. Absolutely. When you talk about walking or cycling or most exercises, the research that has come out in many studies tends to show a life extension of three to four years. With running, it is seven years. And a lot of that, according to the researchers, is due to the psychological and mental expansions that running gives that other activities do not. Running turns on brain circuits for a better attitude, for more vitality, and for personal empowerment, better than anything that's ever been studied. And so once you start doing running in some form, you really become a different person in a positive way. Well, we know that's true of me, Jeff. I mean, you have been a part of my journey for the last over 15 years. And there's no question that that moment, that pivotal moment in my life, when I saw the article in the Wall Street Journal about your program and about you, it changed my life. There's no question about it and put me on a whole new path. I am looking forward to those, those uh, extra years that, I'm, that are ahead of me. <laughs> and they can Jeff, be quality yeah. years too. And, and quality years. Uh, let me say years. that I am just... Uh, I feel very privileged to have been helpful in your journey. Oh, really, thank you. I I give you all the credit, as you know. Jeff, just shifting gears a little bit, you had a major life event take place in this last year. Can you tell us about it? Yes, it was a tremendous surprise. Uh, One of the things that I have prided myself on is uh, doing the various uh, life activities that can keep your heart healthy. And I have really done that for 62 years. I've had an excellent cardiovascular program. Uh, I've also, for the last 46 years since I've been married to my wife, Barbara, I have uh, had great diet, a very healthy diet, and um, other positive things. But without warning, a little, just barely over a year ago, I got up from an exercise session I was doing on a rower and felt so dizzy I had to grab hold of a chair. Turns out I was having a heart attack. I went to uh, the doctor, they checked me out, and they sent me immediately into a stent operation. They put five stents in there and discovered dramatic damage. It turns out that it was, uh, in all probability, my military experience that caused this. I was in the Navy for three years. 18 months of that was off the coast of Vietnam. And our ship regularly went by areas where Agent Orange was being used. And that has been documented by the VA as a cause of heart attacks uh, later in life due to the damage that occurred during that period. But in any case, it happened to me. And I also had five days later, my heart failed. And fortunately, I was in the uh, room uh, of the hospital 
with cardiac people around who were monitoring me, they saw that my heart had stopped. And uh, they tried CPR that did not work. So they got out the paddles. And uh, after a couple of attempts, my ticker got ticking again. And I am here today as a result of that. Had this happened when I was at home or out on a walk or run, I would not be here today. It was really the action of my cardiac team that saved my life. And I am so thankful to Piedmont Hospital in Atlanta for what they did for me. What an incredible story. And it really does make sense that this ties back to your experience during the war. I've heard other such stories and uh, it's it's horrible. And uh, there's no question that your healthy lifestyle also probably helped you as well as your team at Piedmont Hospital (laughs) in Atlanta. They told me that. Uh, Yeah, I'm sure. All of the cardiac specialists made comments similar to this, and that is, if you had not been in the shape that and been doing the running that you had been doing, you would not be alive. You wouldn't have survived these incidents. Really incredible. Now, have you had to change your um, what, how you run, how often you run as a result? What's really interesting is that because particularly uh, of the heart failure part of my story, the cardiac specialists were really, really cautious with me. They they did not want me to go out and start running whatever I could. They held me back from running for two months. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. And two months is not a long time. Yeah, it was a long time for a runner. <laughs> yes, this is true. <laughs> An addicted runner like me. They wouldn't even let me do any significant walking for a month. And I could not believe when I started running two months later how much muscle tone I had lost. It was dramatic. And when I tried to run, I could only run for three seconds. And I had to walk for 30 to 45 seconds to recover from a three-second jog. Amazing. And there were a lot of issues with the heart damage and so forth. But the fact is, I had a long recovery of really nine months before I could feel somewhat natural when I was out on the run. Mm -hmm. Well, we're so grateful to have you back and inspiring all of us and, you know, all of your posts on social media and, you know, you're very visible out there. You really are just such an inspiration for so many of us. And I hope that people listening to this episode of Gruff Talk who don't know about you will, in fact, you know, go to your website and find out more about your program. And you're just such an inspiration. Jeff. When we come back after this short break, my guest, Jeff Galloway, will talk us through all the key steps you need to start a running program, whatever your age. Stay tuned. Okay, we're back with Jeff Galloway talking about how to start running at any age. But also, why age should never be something that holds you back from anything. All right, Jeff. So I have followed your program and your advice for over 15 years. And I'm in training to run my 15th marathon. When I run that 15th, I know, yay. When I run that 15th marathon, it'll be the New York City Marathon in November. I'll be one month away from turning 66, which really Super. makes me very, very proud. My goal is to keep running for the rest of my life. Talk us through the best way for people to start your program, really, at whatever age they are. Like, And we all know you have to start where you are, whatever age that is, whatever your ability is, whatever your fitness level is. So you have to start where you are. What's the very first step, Jeff? Well, Barbara, as you know, the writing process, writing books, is uh, primarily a research exercise and and experience and a series of learning experiences as a result of this. And I have learned so much in writing my 33 books that... 
Is it 33? Oh my gosh, I didn't even realize it was 33. I think I've read a lot of them, but not all of them. <laughs> it's wonderful because um, each book requires extensive research. And this has opened up to me so many areas that I did not know were positive effects of exercise and then tips on how to maximize these. And when it comes to the whole area of what is an appropriate age for not doing strenuous activity, I can tell you that the research is mainly on the side of there is no age. <laughs> you can mm -hmm. keep doing this past the age of 100, and there now are a growing number of stories of people that do just that, that run marathons now past the age of 100. Mm -hmm. I really genuinely hope to be one of those people. I really well, do. <laughs> I'm going to predict that you will be one of those people. And, Yay! <laughs> and, you know, the, the reason is that you adapt yourself when you run, mind, body, and spirit, and you keep adapting yourself so that your body, in essence, thinks that you're about 40 to 50 years younger than you really are because you're able to do things that people 40 to 50 years younger do, and your body adapts to that. The greatest benefit is in the mind, because not only do you keep those good attitude circuits, the vitality circuit, the empowerment circuit at any age at in top form so that you feel better, but you actually grow new brain cells. Yes, it is a fact that when you stay out there on a run, walk, workout for 30 minutes or more, you stimulate a brain hormone called BDNF that not only triggers the growth of new brain stem cells, but it brings them into the brain in the operation and keeps them around because they're put to work. And, and it's... Uh, a recent research study showed that when a person runs for three days, he or she grows over 100,000 new brain uh, stem cells, and, and they become a permanent part of the brain if you keep running regularly, as in every other day. As in every other, isn't that what you recommend? Because that's what I generally do. I tend to follow your program to the T. Every other day is my typical program. What do you say about that? It's particularly important, Barbara, for those above a certain age. And I'll let mm -hmm. each, each listener fill in what that age is. But the bottom line is, in order to keep your muscles in top form, whatever that is for you, you have to have not only an exercise session, but you have to have a rest period, a recovery period afterwards, because it's during the recovery period that the adaptations for uh, doing better exercise occur. And if you don't have the recovery in the right pattern, then you're going to have things break down. And of course, none of us want to have to take an injury time out from our exercise program. But what's really exciting about the ability to exercise through Run, Walk, Run is that each person is in control of how they exercise. You change up the amount of running, the amount of walking to adapt to what you can do, not anybody else. And on any given day, if you had been doing 30 seconds run and 30 seconds walk, if that's not working, you go down to 20 seconds or 15 or 10 seconds or three seconds of running and then walk for 30 to 60 seconds and in every case that I have ever heard, when somebody's had a bad day, when they have changed things up, they get right back out there and they get all of those benefits that you and I know about, Barbara. Yep. And one thing, too, I want to point out to people is that one of my favorite expressions that you you like to say or your message is leave your ego at the door because I think there are some people out there who might think, oh, well, then you're not really a runner 
if you're doing run with walk breaks. And I would say, well, I am absolutely a runner and I have been doing run walk for 15 years. I'm a, I'm a runner. And, you know, so you have to leave your ego at the door, right? That is so true. You can be slow and you can take walk breaks and you're still a runner. What do you say about that? You know, it's all about these amazing effects. Of course, there are many, many, many physical effects that you get from every single run. But the mental effects are longer lasting in terms of how you feel as you get older, keeping you at the top of your game mentally. And so what you do in taking charge over the run, walk, run is you enable yourself to keep going. Uh, Sadly, I also hear from a lot of people who, as you just indicated, refuse to do run, walk, run. They just say, if I can't run nonstop, then I'm not going to run. And that's Mm -hmm. what happens Mm -hmm. because our bodies, as they get older, are not designed to run nonstop and uh, they break. But with the right run, walk, run, nothing has to break. You can insert that walk break and keep on going. And keep on going. That's exactly right. And so, like I said, 15 years and going strong, it's still working for me. One thing too, I want to point out is that I started your program with a specific goal in mind at that time. At that time, 15 years ago, my goal was to run my first New York City marathon because my daughter wanted me to. And I said, okay, I'm going to do it. And so I started your program. But not everybody wants to run a marathon or even a half marathon. So what we're talking about today is more about incorporating the run walk program into your life as your form of exercise that you can do really for the rest of your life. So I just want to be very clear about that. Everyone tuning in, you don't have to run a marathon, although I have to say it's a lot of fun and you get a dandy good medal at the end. (laughs) And And the mental empowerment that is unique. Oh, yeah. I talk to people all week long who have goals and then they report back in after they have achieved those goals. Mm -hmm. And the marathon, right uh, in from the time I started tabulating results and data, has been the one activity in life that bestows the greatest sense of accomplishment. Even those that go on and do ultra marathons and so forth. Most of them, when quizzed about what tends to give you, an, on an ongoing basis, the best sense of accomplishment, it's almost always the marathon. Yeah. It's, I mean, so far, my 14 marathons so far, each one of them has been very special to me and has given me a great deal of pride great deal of pride. Not that many people in this on this planet can say that they have in fact run a marathon, that they're a marathoner. I think it's less than 1% if I'm not mistaken. So it's really, it's, it's, it's one a great- tenth of that, what, Barbara. Is it? Oh, wow. It's oh, one tenth even more of 1% special. of the population <laughs> each year that finishes a marathon. Wow, that's incredible. I did do one ultra, by the way. But you know, just a very quick thing. I know we're not really talking about marathons today per se, but as I mentioned, I do follow your program exactly as you laid it out. And the one thing I do and the rest of my Galloway, New York City teammates really think they kind of poke fun at me a little bit. But that one last long run before every marathon is longer than a marathon, and it is 30 miles. I've always done 30 miles. So thank you for that, Jeff. (laughs) Okay. Hey, Jeff, a few weeks ago, and I, I really want you to weigh in on this. I had a sports medicine doctor, really great guy, Dr. Jordan Metzel on the show talking about how to keep knees strong for life. So you can continue to do what you love doing for as long as possible. He did a really great job at dispelling that very popular myth about how running hurts your knees. We know now that that is not true. And in fact, running helps to keep knees strong and injury-free, at least according to all the science I've seen. What do you say to people who still believe that myth, 
that running hurts your knees. What do you say to them? Well, Barbara, you are absolutely right on target according to the research. The leading experts in orthopedics that relate to arthritis will tell you that the best thing you can do to make arthritis worse is to just sit down all day long and not move. It's That's right. But, but movement causes your legs, knees, joints to adapt, and they keep adapting. And even if you have arthritis, most people can manage it through regular movement activity. Walking is the first way, but running does some unique beneficial things that walking does not. And the key is to use my method of run, walk, run, and find the short amounts of running that will allow you to stay in the game. And by the way, there's another technique I need to mention for beginners or for any folks that are having challenges like arthritis. You want to do a form that uh, has your feet low to the ground, has a relatively short stride, and you touch lightly as you go forward. So with feet low to the ground and a short stride, light touch, you use momentum. And there's, uh, in several studies I've seen, there is less pressure and, and tension on your knees when doing the running technique that I just mentioned than there is in walking. And you call it a bit of a shuffle. It's like That's a exactly shuffling, correct, really. That's exactly Barbara. You are mm-hmm. a good student. <laughs> <laughs> been following you for a long time. And yep. Yep. Jeff, this was such a great conversation about running and age and how being fearless about trying new things can not only enhance your enjoyment of life, but possibly even extend it. I think we've kind of proven that with a lot of the statistics that you've been mentioning. Thank you so much, Jeff. And we will have links to your books, to the program, your website, and more in the show notes. And everyone, there are a lot of Galloway groups out there uh, around the world, actually. I've met Galloway or, or, or Jeffers, as they're, as they're often called, especially in the UK. I've met many, many people around the world who follow your program, Jeff. But there are groups around the country. I am a member of the Galloway uh, New York City group, a proud member of many, many, many years. So you should check out in your area to see if there is a group. And you know what? If there isn't, maybe you want to start one. Jeff, before we say goodbye for now, because I want you back again on the show for sure, I want this to be an ongoing conversation. Can you please give the Gruff Talk audience three key takeaways that you really want them to remember from this conversation today? Well, first of all, it is important that you start gently on every workout to warm up the orthopedic units. And that is usually done by a three-minute walk and then three-minute segments of very short amount of running that would build up to whatever it is that you would normally do. That helps to ensure that you're going to be injury-free because the body naturally adapts to running if you do it gently at first. The second tip is to stay motivated by having a goal. Now, it doesn't have to be a marathon. It can just be some goal that's meaningful to you. It could be Mm -hmm. that I want to be able to get out and do some form of running every other day or some form of walking. Walking bestows tremendous benefits, particularly among those that have been sedentary. Mm -hmm. But I will say that the running gives far more mental benefits. And that's why you and I are going to be promoting running because we want people to receive the maximum benefit that they have in their exercise time. And with Run, Walk, Run, it does not have to hurt. Uh, And if you have any issues, then take a walk break of about three to five minutes to reset everything and then start back with a more gentle run, walk, run. And if you have any questions about what ratios to use, you can go to my website, jeffgalloway.com, and you can even email me. Uh, You can email from the website. We have a free 
email service from the website, and I'll get back to you and tell you what's going on. We also have a, a series of wonderful weekend retreats where you can really learn hands-on type experience in which I teach. And, and these are really wonderful. We oh, have met wonderful, so wonderful. many great friends. Highly recommended, everyone. And, and that's all on the website as well. Right, yes. Jeff? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Jeff, thank you so much. It was so much fun seeing you. Oh, everyone, you're not seeing Jeff. I am. <laughs> well, sorry. so this good is... <laughs> to uh, to be a part of of this wonderful production. You do a fantastic job, Barbara, and I'm ready to help at any time. So just let me know. Thank you. Let's just keep cheering each other on, and let's just run until we're a hundred or so. Right, Jeff? Or farther. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Barbara. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. If you enjoyed this episode of Rough Talk, please do two things. First, share it with all your friends and family and subscribe to Rough Talk wherever you listen to podcasts, including YouTube, so you never miss a single episode. Until next time, remember this. We can't control getting older, but we can control how we do it. Talk to you soon. Age Better Podcast is a proud member of the Sound Advice Network. Sound Advice, women's voices amplified.